Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of Cedarfield. Thank you for joining this live chat or watching this video this evening. I am most appreciative that you're joining us. Uh, those of you that are here at the community, residents and team members alike, uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, and if you are a family member and or a Pinnacle Advantage member, uh, listening this to this uh, video tonight. If you have any questions about the content of today's recording, please feel free to, um, to call down to the administration suite uh, tomorrow and we will answer any and all of your questions just as soon as we can tomorrow morning. Uh, format for today is very simple. Uh, we have uh, yours truly here to talk a little bit about um, our um, evolving preparedness plan. Um, and talk a little bit about some tidbits of information around uh, administration and other departments. We have Christy Walsh Smith here, who's our sales and marketing director with some, uh, with some updates. And we have Margaret here, um, a delightful surprise. Margaret will be here rounding out the live chat for some spiritual well-being and some great news. And then, of course, if anybody has any questions um, that are burning questions that you think would be for the good of uh, good of the order for everyone to know what the answers are, please feel free to uh, text this telephone number that you see here uh, to the left of your screen, and we will answer all of those questions as well during this chat. I'm going to start off with some good news. Amen. Uh, our dashboard is green around COVID-19 um, for residents and team members um, and quite honestly any um, visitors that have been coming onto the property. Uh, that gatehouse check has, um, has not unearthed any uh, folks that have been feeling sick and or we have not had to uh, work with anybody, any of our visitors our vendors, strategic partners to help uh, maybe um, uh, exit anybody due to the fact that they have uh, they were sick. So all really is good news in the last week. We're very happy with that. As the Commonwealth sits here at 54% uh, vaccinated, double dose. Uh, so that's trending in the right direction. All the things have really slowed down. Um, Many people have asked over the last week for a breakdown, um, again, of our vaccination rate. Um, so with the risk of sounding redundant, uh, since it was a hot topic here in the last week, just want to go through some of the numbers here at Cedarfield. Uh, we are 94% fully vaccinated across all team members and residents. So that's great news. Uh, team member wise, we are, last time I reported, we are about 80% vaccinated. And as of today, we're 82%. So we're trending in the right direction. Um, there's 52 uh, team members that have chosen not to get vaccinated. And of those 52, uh, 17 of them are in healthcare. 11 of them are in assisted living and six in uh, morning glory, our memory support area. Uh, so that's team member wise. And then residents in independent living, uh, we are a mighty 99% vaccinated, double dose. Um, and the residents that are in assisted living are 99% uh, vaccinated and memory support is 100% vaccinated and the health center right now is 99% vaccinated. So those are pretty strong numbers, um, particularly as we continue to hear about this Delta variant and the spike in um, the Delta uh, in people who are not vaccinated. Um, I think I heard a report the other day of 35% of all the cases now in certain regions are uh, because of the Delta variant. So uh, we're going to continue to keep educating and communicating with the 50 plus uh, team members that are not vaccinated and help. Uh, help them see some the wisdom of the, uh, the vaccination. 
and um, so we haven't thrown in the towel yet. Uh, it's it's our goal to get as many people continually um, vaccinated over time. So no word yet um, from our Virginia Department of Health friends about a second uh, a booster shot for uh, the Pfizer. In terms of our COVID-19 evolving preparedness plan, uh, we have reached out to the Virginia Department of Health uh, here over the last week and are waiting um, a response to some of our outstanding questions. Uh, they had a little bit of a turnover uh, in that department and our, uh, our nurse, the nurse that was assigned to us through the Virginia Department of Health uh, went on to apparently greener pastures. We have a new person assigned to Cedarfield. And so we want, uh, we actually want that person to come visit Cedarfield, have a tour, get to meet the uh, key people of the COVID-19 preparedness plan team here, um, and then walk through the history of our preparedness plan over the last 18 months with that person. So uh, we do have a couple of questions outstanding for them. And um, again, uh, probably the other biggest topic that the administration has been fielding over the last uh, seven days or so is the fact that the governors re released all these restrictions and the executive orders closed out. Um, so why are we continuing to even talk about uh, preparedness plans? And I, again, I would just uh, uh, reiterate that Cedarfield, even if we weren't in a pandemic, and um, there was an, some type of respiratory outbreak at Cedarfield, Virginia Department of Health would be our partner in helping keeping people safe and help coming to the drawing board with us about our preparedness plan. So uh, it's, it's not unusual that we would be taking a partnering lead with the Department of Health to make sure that um, all of our plans are in place and any other recommendations that they would suggest in order to um, uh, mitigate uh, such an outbreak. So this isn't really an unusual partnership with uh, Virginia Department of Health. But we, uh, on our list to ask uh, questions about with them, um, are mask wearing for team members, uh, visitors uh, in our uh, in our restaurants, and uh, in our gatehouse protocol, or the three really main questions that we have for them. So as soon as I hear word um, uh, about uh, their recommendations with our preparedness plan, and here locally we talk about those recommendations, I promise everyone that's listening that you'll be the first to know, I promise. Uh, in terms of the COVID-19 vaccine distribution, we have the J&J &J vaccine available to us through Remedy Pharmacy, our strategic partner down in the Atrium Cafe, Atrium area. Uh, we do not currently have a clinic scheduled. However, any resident that's listening out there uh, that is not vaccinated, the 1% that's not vaccinated, and team members, the 12% that are not vaccinated, um, they are equipped, uh, we are equipped, Ann Hopper and in the clinic for any resident and Connie McGowan for any team member uh, that needs some more education and communication and a comfort level about uh, the J&J &J vaccine. They are there to support you and as soon as we get five people scheduled, uh, we'll have our first clinic. So. I think that's all about the COVID-19 vaccine. Any questions coming in about COVID-19? There are no questions coming in about COVID-19. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over here briefly to Christy Walsh-Smith, our sales and marketing director. And then yours truly will come back with some more information about uh, administration and other departments. Thank you, Michael. 
Can, I'm sure you all can hear me. So good afternoon, I'm Christy Walsh-Smith and I do serve as the Marketing and Sales Director for Cedarfield, proudly and loudly. Um, I can't wait to see you all here in person again very soon. Hopefully we'll be doing that soon. Um, I do just have a couple of updates. First of all, I feel like every time I come in front of you all, I'm welcoming a new team member, which is exciting. Um, so just to kind of review who we have in our marketing department here at Cedarfield, we have um, Beth Premack, who many of you all know, myself, of course, uh, Amanda Frost, who joined us in February, Patty Schwimmer, who joined us about six weeks ago, and uh, we have another new team member in marketing. Her name is Bo Baker, and this is her second week at Cedarfield. Some of you all have met her, um, and she will be kind of leading the charge with the Pinnacle Advantage program and the marketing effort. Um, she comes to us with, with a great deal of experience, um, and we're so proud to have her. So if you see her in the hall, her name is Bo Baker. Please welcome her to Cedarfield. So I've been getting a lot of questions about um, kind of where we are with um, our marketing effort and where we are as far as occupancy in the community. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update. So as of last Friday, um, we have 11 apartments and cottages in progress, which means that um, someone has taken out applications and they are in the process of being a Cedarfield resident. So there are 11 apartments and cottages in turnover. We present have um, seven that we are actively selling and um, that brings us to 98% reserved and occupied and independent living so I know there's been a lot of questions about that and I just wanted to kind of make sure that everyone knew that we are 98% occupied and independent living at Cedarfield so um, we are going to be updating that mean that does mean that there's 11 people in the process of um, coming to join us and um, I think Amanda right at, at this very moment is updating the uh, piece that um, is in our marketing department that tells you all who your new neighbors are going to be so as soon as we have um, a commitment from them and we know that um, we're able to share their names and um, when they're going to be or where they're going to be living, we will do that. So we look forward to um, sharing that information with you all soon. And please come by the marketing office and meet our new team members if you haven't had a chance to do so. So thank you very much. And I think maybe Michael might be coming back to give you a few more updates. Okay, in terms of our master plan uh, renovation, uh, we met with our general contractor, Horgan, uh, last Thursday, and um, our timeline for the next couple of phases has not changed, so that's good news. Uh, so the dining room in assisted living should come back on, online towards um, uh, the middle of August. The administration wing um, of health services uh, should come back online at the end of September, as well as the apartment, the assisted living apartments um, on the third floor underneath that administration wing. And um, the Medicare neighborhood, uh, Medicare Part A neighborhood will uh, likely come online of June of next year, which I, I, I I cannot wait for this level of service to uh, be finally here at Cedarfield. So uh, speaking of Medicare neighborhood, there's uh, been some questions that have been coming into the administration suite about what's the difference between this Medicare neighborhood that you keep talking about, Michael, and affirmation, this um, partnership that we have with Lakewood that has hospice, home health, and home care business lines versus this Medicare neighborhood. Uh, so we, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start publicizing in written format um, and during these live chats or maybe even having some town hall meetings about it, uh, the difference between the two. Uh, it, they're both value add service lines to Cedarfield residents. 
um, providing that safety net for people. And so uh, it's, uh, it's a great thing. It's a blessing that we're actually uh, ramping up for these service lines. So uh, more education to come so that everyone's fully informed about how these service lines can benefit residents at Cedar Field as we um, as people age uh, either in place or need the, the traditional continuum of care and or need different services um, temporarily so uh, so that's that is still on target and then uh, we're adding 20 assisted living apartments uh, to the fourth floor and those are due to come in at different phases December of 2022 uh, will we will employ 10 of them and then the following 10 will open up around May of 2023 so all that's tracking uh, in the in the right direction and then the the other component uh, to all of those renovations is moving our uh, Mor Morning Glory Avenue folks that are on the fourth floor of the household building back down to the um, second floor, a renovated second floor that is currently under construction. Uh, and that timeline is on schedule as well. And we're aiming for a January uh, move for those residents to move back to that space. So uh, last week I talked a little bit about a, a, some type of communication uh, board uh, by the mailboxes that highlights milestone dates and capital projects and frequently asked questions that come up from residents particularly during the resident council meeting and uh, I have a template of that and Eldon Rutger and I are reviewing that template hope to put the first edition of this and maybe update it every week thereafter uh, but hope to put the first edition uh, by the mailboxes uh, early part of next week. So hopefully that helps improve uh, communication at Cedar Field. Couple of save the dates. First is July 22nd from two to four o'clock. Uh, you'll, most people will have a flyer in their cubby box by the end of the week. Uh, we, when people retire at Cedar Field, uh, we celebrate uh, the retirement, and uh, right now we have one person retiring. <laughs> uh, Renee Langley is retiring at the end of July. Uh, so on July 22nd, between 2 and 4, we're going to have an open house type of retirement party here in Fellowship Hall. Uh, so look forward to that flyer coming out to your cubby box or mailbox uh, by the end of the week. Um, and more information to come about that. Second save the date is September 24th. Um, we are celebrating our 25th anniversary uh, on that day. It's a Friday with a music festival. There's a team of residents and staff team members that have uh, come together uh, to really been putting together this whole year long celebration. Um, and this is the capstone event. Um, seems like every month has been a capstone event with the planning actually um, this is the finale event and it proves to be a a, a, a good time uh, we'll have uh, celebrating music and our 25th anniversary so um, we're working out a schedule between 1 30 and 8 o'clock at night different stages throughout the community different genres of music uh, so it should be fun save the date September 24th Believe it or not, there's a hurricane heading our way. Um, coming from somebody that lived in Florida for 10 years, right close to the eye of this one, Hurricane One, uh, this uh, Elsa storm that just touched, I say touched, but didn't make landfall, but came pretty close to Tampa St. Pete. If you can keep all those folks in your prayers and anybody else that's in storm's way, um, I would appreciate it. I have a lot of friends down there in Tampa and St. Pete. Uh, but that storm will be here tomorrow night. It's a quick moving storm around eight, nine o'clock, the so-called eye of the storm. Uh, the good news for Richmond folks is that the way the path is headed towards our way, it'll be more south, um, southeast corner of Virginia. Franklin, I think I heard from the emergency uh, management team 
early this morning. Uh, that's where the eye of the storm will be is trending right now. So at this moment in time where we are standing um, and you are viewing, we should expect probably about an inch, inch and a half of rain over the course of tomorrow night into Friday and about 15 to 35 mile an hour gusts. Um, and so it's, it's a typical thunder shower um, uh, prolonged for about, they, they're calling in Richmond for about 16 hours. So if anybody has any questions, uh, the team is preparing the site, um, but it should not be as, um, uh, the wind shouldn't be as strong that we have to really have every resin take things off of your balconies, et cetera. It shouldn't be that type of event. D-Wing, if you live in D-Wing, uh, Jack Johnson and I are gonna host a little town hall meeting uh, here in the Fellowship Hall on July 16th at one o'clock. Answer any and all of your questions related to the building. Um, talk about warranty issues, talk about uh, fire evacuation. Um, so please mark your calendars, July 16th at one o'clock, right here in Fellowship Hall. If any other area, um, would like um, any of the directors of the departments to come to your area, please reach out. And we made this announcement about a month ago. We absolutely willing, ready and able to come to any area rep meeting uh, to talk about specific departments. So, and uh, I think that rounds out affirmation home health. Um, great news with on the philanthropy front, um, a mighty, philanthropy team of nine residents got together uh, not too long ago to talk about the five applications that have been forwarded to the scholarship committee and they're reviewing those scholarships so again just want to thank all the residents who generously have been donating to this fund it's making a significant impact and uh, particularly thank you to the to the residents who serve on the scholarship committee. They take their role very seriously and uh, safeguarding our funds, your funds, um, and making sure that sites that uh, team members are applying for are accredited sites um, so that the team member gets the right education. On the human resources front, uh, just uh, I, I mentioned this a couple times in the past, but um, we are really creating a very strong alliance with the Community College Work Alliance Group um, and the CNA school I keep referencing, Fresh Start. Uh, we will be a host site uh, for this partnership and uh, helping, uh, it's self-serving, uh, first of all, but then helping the greater good uh, with uh, CNA programs and helping people who really want to aspire to be a, a, a professional CNA uh, go through this very um, awesome program full of integrity um, and taught the right way of how to uh, go about this profession and get your license. And so that's why we've chosen Fresh Start. Uh, Teresa, the owner, Teresa Mason uh, of Fresh Start, she actually used to work here at Cedarfield down in the pharmacy for a number of years as their uh, lead nurse. And so she's very familiar with uh, Cedarfield and just so proud to be partnering with us. So again, this partnership is gonna help feed CNAs um, who fit our culture into the organization. And then we're a conduit really for helping other nursing homes, assisted living communities and retirement communities in the area. So great, great news. Uh, we're going to have a job fair here in Fellowship Hall in the early part of August uh, between 4 and 8 on August 10th. Uh, and so we're going to ask everyone's cooperation with parking out front because we do anticipate over 100 people coming in to go through the interview process. Um, on that particular day. So more information to come about that uh, so that we can clear out all those parking spaces out front. That's the human resources front. Um, again, on human resources, we re really had a great week here with uh, applications for CNAs and servers. Uh, Stephanie 
and Bridget that work in the Human Resources Organizational Development uh, Department uh, have been working hard to change up ads and wording of ads and placement of ads and um, David Stewart and the Dining Services team have been working hard at partnerships so not just posting stuff on social media but actually working with um, the community college working with the high schools and creating relationships that uh, hopefully will stand the test of time um, and we can will continue to utilize high schools as a feeder as well so we're working hard uh, we have seen an, an uptick in applications over this last uh, week uh, for both of those departments so uh, the team is filtering through them and making sure that we bring in the right people um, and uh, try to find people that fit our culture so and I think that rounds it out for me I do have one question that has come in, a couple questions have come in um, you said last time that maintenance should have a three-way stop outside of the D-Wing. Um, those stop signs are not out there. Uh, as far as I know, there is a three-way stop sign, uh, a three-way intersection um, outside of the D-Wing parking garage. Those uh, stop signs should be, uh, should be there as we speak now, I'm, I'm almost positive. Um, second question that came in, when will the dumpster be removed from the three parking spaces near Parkview entrance? Uh, that dumpster is serving uh, the construction team that's renovating uh, the old memory uh, morning glory avenue uh, neighborhood and so that construction is supposed to conclude uh, in the early part of december so uh, as i as i know it right now as i'm standing here i'm almost positive that dumpster needs to be there through the early part of december uh, but i'll check on that and uh, we'll get back to everybody during the next live chat. There's one more question that came in. Are there going to be any new two bedroom, two bath apartments in assisted living for couples? The answer is yes, there are. They're uh, on the fourth floor right now in our health services area. Uh, when we renovate that space and create uh, 22 more assisted living apartments, um, there are two two-bedroom apartments um, in on that uh, area those of you that are familiar with that uh, level when you're walking down the hall and you come to the great room and you can make a right or a left all the way down at the end of those hallways there'll be one on either side uh, a two-bedroom two-bath two-bedroom one-bath I think it's what it is so I don't think there's any other questions that have come in if anybody has any questions about the content of this live chat, please, please feel free to call down to the administration suite and or contact any of the directors and we will just answer any and all of your questions as soon as we can. Okay, next up is Margaret is here for some words of spiritual well-being. Hi everyone, I am very happy to be back. It seems like a long time since I've gotten to share a few minutes with you. Um, we're all in a different phase right now. Um, and now that we are well into transitioning back toward some semblance of our pre-COVID life, we see that there are challenges um, with that as well, uh, the post-COVID the post phase. Um, it continues to be helpful, I think, for all of us to remember that we are still in this together, and together we're going to be just fine. Uh, I have a few inspirational quotes um, that may help all of us work towards being just a little more gentle with ourselves as we move forward, um, and I hope um, that you find some nugget in one of them that will help you. Um, the first is... Uh, by Sun Tzu, 
and he says, in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. And I think we realize that new beginnings are a chance to help make things right and to make things better. Sometimes it feels like chaos, but maybe if we try not to look at it that way, it would be helpful. Um, we now have the advantage of having taken a step back so we can approach going forward with a fresh perspective on what we've learned in the past year. Um, another quote is by Napoleon Hill, and he says, don't wait. The time will never be just right. Um, instead of worrying about making, every, making sure everything is perfect, um, give it your best try. You can miss out on a lot of great opportunities if we are waiting for perfection that may or may not come. Um, another quote is by John Lennon, who said, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. It's a very simple quote, but he was such an inspiring person. Um, things may seem overwhelming as we move forward, but this quote reminds us that in the end, everything's going to work out just fine. Um, William James says to us, act as if what you do makes a difference. It does. In today's crazy world, it can sometimes seem that small actions may not make an impact um, or have any important relevance. This quote reminds us that we matter as to all of our actions. Ed Sheeran says, it's okay to not be okay. Don't worry if every single day as you weave your life back, it doesn't feel like you're doing okay. Give yourself some time to adjust to a new reality as we work our way back to normal. And lastly, Madame Curie says, nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so we may fear less. And as we head back into living our lives, take time to continue educating yourself and ourselves on the facts of COVID so we know exactly what we're dealing with. These are just a few things to keep in mind as we all move forward together. And again, just remember we are still in all of this together. Thank you.